<clears throat> I find television very educating. Every time someone turns on the set, I go to the other room and read a book. I wonder if Groucho Marx would have enjoyed booktubers. Because I'm pretty sure he would have been disappointed in Gangnam Style. I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome to another episode of the Books and Beer Hangout. My name is Jeff Moriarty, and our topic this evening breaks from the pages and tries to put an end to boring book videos with some YouTube strategies for authors. Our guest tonight is Caleb Ross, and I'm going to let him introduce himself, tell us a little bit about what he does and what he's drinking this evening. Hello, I uh, make YouTube videos uh, regarding about books and about uh, just book culture and book community. Um, I'm also an author, but that really is kind of a side uh, side thing when it comes to the videos. And I am drinking a delicious rye on rye from Boulevard. Uh, they only make it once every two years, and it's from a brewery just up the road from myself. So I load it up, and I hopefully will have enough to last me for the next two years. We don't get a lot of the boulevards down here, but when I go back to my uh, humble beginnings in the mediocre state of OK, I can typically <laughs> find the uh, boulevards there. Jeff, what are you drinking tonight? So I went with a, uh, a simple classic, but one of my favorites, the uh, Nitro Milk Stout <laughs> from Left Hand. Nice and tasty, and if I go partake of a cigar later, it'll carry me right over into that. And what do you got cooking over there, EVO? I will round things out with my uh, opulent IPA by the Epic Brewing Company and uh, oddly enough, uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. Weird and wonderful. So, sounds like a good mix of beers tonight. Well, enough about the beering. Let's talk about the booking and specifically about the booking of the tubing. And I've got way too many ings in this stuff here. So, enough to this. So, so Caleb, you're an author who's doing a lot of stuff on YouTube. So why'd you, why did you pick YouTube as a place for you to really hang your hat? I, I, I think it was because it's it's so unstructured. Um, I uh, I feel as though uh, there's there's a lot there's a many there's a lot fewer limitations when it comes to being able to do things uh, in a visual medium. People are not dedicating as much time to a two minute video as they might be to you know one of my longer novels or something like that. So it's a way to kind of get people's faces. And I've always felt as though I was funny. I don't know if that's true, but I've always felt that. And it really it comes across better in video. And that's really all it is. I just wanted to be able to talk about books and, and try to be funny. And that's what it is. So what is your goal in tackling the video? I mean, are you just trying to look at it for some marketing? Or what are you, what are you after? Marketing is definitely part of it. Uh, but honestly, it is, it is a side uh, benefits. Um, when I, I consciously, when I started making these videos routinely, I've making been making them for a while. Started making them about twice a week for the last year or so, and I consciously made the decision that I didn't want to be the guy throwing my book in people's faces, saying "Buy this, buy this," because I hate being, <laughs> I hate being subjected to that. So as Evo does as well, and uh, and so I wanted to just talk about books and get people interested in me as a personality. And then, you know, at the end for two seconds, I could say, oh, yeah, I have books and that's it. And it seems to seems to be very, very uh, effective, to be honest with you. So my main goal is just to communicate and, and be in front of people and talk about books and immerse myself in a, an even more more of a vacuum than I guess I already am when it comes to book culture. Uh, so I, I just get further down in there and communicate with people about books. And that's the primary goal, really. So, but you yeah. really, you really don't want to be that jerk who just goes on a video and is like, "Oh, here's my book, just you know, sitting here, look at it in the background on my whiteboard," kind of guy, right? I definitely do not. I, I learned long ago that nobody cares if you've written something. I mean, everyone can't write a book. I literally, you can spend five dollars and have a stack of old grade school papers bound and on Amazon in 10 minutes. So no, it's not special to have a book anymore. What's special is going back to the root word of author, you know, being an authority, not an author necessarily, but being an authority on something and making books is sort of one aspect of being that authority. So quick answer, no, I definitely don't want to be that guy. And it's, I don't think that's effective anyway. That's, that's spam, you know, it's just spammy nonsense and I, I dislike it. So I refrain as much as I can. 
as much as you can. By the way. Good to know. Oh, I, I hadn't even <laughs> noticed. That's right. I forgot I was back there too. Well, that's yeah. crazy. Crazy stuff. Hey, so let's talk about this, this video aspect for a minute because you're part of this movement that are called booktubers. Um, and so explain to us a little bit about what, what a booktuber is and how it's different from just some jerk getting on YouTube saying buy my book all the time. <laughs> um, it's, uh, I, I definitely have to say first off that I, I am by no means like, you know, a, a figurehead. I, there's probably a lot of booktubers watching and if they, if they felt that I was trying to take credit for something, they would, they would hate me forever. So I want to make sure that I've been doing it for a relatively short amount of time. Um, there's a lot of people out there that have been doing it much longer, uh, but I really felt into it, fell into it. And it, what it is, is it's, it's the difference between uh, promotion and, and uh, community is, is really the difference between booktubing and being a person out there trying to hawk your wares, you'll actually find a surprisingly little amount of promotion. It's mostly people uh, doing book reviews. Uh, it's really just sort of a fan culture, uh, people doing book reviews um, and, and talking about books, discussing books, and developing relationships around specific books. It's, it's dominated right now primarily by sort of a young adult reader, uh, which is unfortunate in my case because I don't read anything young adult. And so I'm trying to get other people out there involved, but at the same time, seeing someone talk about a book, it, it, the passion is addictive. So they could be talking about, you know, Twilight for 30 minutes. I don't care about Twilight, and I still would watch it because it's engaging, and I can see their passion, and that, to me, is, is the draw of it. Well, you know, I'm very much of the opinion that readers, especially in the digital media here, want to connect with an author more than just one book, right? They want to learn more about you. And you especially seem to be using YouTube, your video, as a way to connect people. Hey, this is what I'm interested in. This is what I love. You love books, so you do, like I saw your Da Vinci Code review and other things. And it really seems more of an extension of your personality, um, almost just a, a vehicle than, say, a marketing play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it absolutely is. Uh, it's, it's a way for me to do something. I, I used to, I used to, anytime I'd have stupid thoughts, like the Da Vinci Code, as an example, that, that video is about me admitting, as someone who likes literary fiction, me admitting that I actually really enjoyed the story of the Da Vinci Code, and someone being in the literary world, that's, that's a horrible thing to say, and you'll get, you'll get stoned for it, so, um, so it's, so it was me kind of having fun with that idea, and that might be something I used to try to write and try to write a quick blog post about why I like it or whatever. And then I've realized that the video, the medium is just so much more an extension of who, how I think and what I do. I can be much more irreverent uh, and it comes across, I think, people see that there's production in a video. They see that you've taken time to it. If I'm making an irreverent blog post and spit out 200 words, that doesn't really have the same appeal because people don't feel like you didn't spend much time on that. I can go to any web forum and, and read 200 words of someone being snarky, but if I can see the equivalent on video, it, it, it's a little bit more, there's more engagement there, and I think they can sense that I'm passionate about it more so than just a blog post or something like that. Okay, so what's, what's worked the best for you so far out of all the different things that you've tried? Well, if, if, we, if we look at the goal as selling books, is that, that kind of the question I guess you'd be getting at what's worked the best in terms of selling books or in terms of just becoming, becoming a larger person? part of the community or, or I guess what you mean specifically by my book. I left it, I left it a little vague on purpose. So <laughs> I will mean, answer. It sounds, it sounds like marketing is a secondary uh, concern and raising yeah. awareness of who you are and what you're like and, and so on is primary. So yeah, um, consider it a success. What's worked best, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just answer both because I'm sure there's people out there watching from both, pers both perspectives, people who do want to primarily sell their books and people who might not care as much about that. So from a book selling perspective, honestly, when I tend not to sell my books or promote my books, that almost seems to work the best. Uh, ever since I've started making these videos and, and curbing back any of the self-promotional stuff, the sales of my books have been pretty consistent. Uh, not necessarily out there and amazing, but they've been consistent at least, whereas in the past it's been spotty. And I think people, people really gravitate that. So really just kind of not talking about my books has really kind of helped sell the books. Um, in terms of being part of the community, it's an old social media adage. It's weird to say an old social media adage. It's showing my age a little bit, I guess. But it's an adage that, that engagement, you know, in SEO, I guess content would be king for people to know that. And in social, it's really kind of engagement can, can, is king, or at least queen, I suppose. Um, so you have, uh, you have uh, I don't know what that meant either. And so you, have, <laughs> you, you, you talk with people and you engage with people. And 
absolutely every time I go to new people's videos, people I, I don't necessarily communicate with on YouTube, and I leave comments and I ask questions of them. It, almost, uh, almost, I can almost measure it out on a graph if I wanted to that subscriber and, and engagement on my videos increases, and it's not necessarily from those people who whose videos I left comments on. It's from other people reading those comments. It's a weird kind of web out there, but that's really it. Engagement and just uh, not talking about my books seems to work. So, so it sounds to me that in, instead of just out there schlepping your wares and hoping somebody buys your book and, and doing a, a, a drive-by shot out there, you're invested in this idea of, of building a network and communicating and, and doing more. You know, there are authors out there or would-be authors out there who are saying, you know, I don't want to do any of that. I just want to sit back and write. Will this work for them? I don't know that anything will work for an author who just wants to sit back and write, whether it's YouTube, whether it's anything, because, uh, again, it goes back to me saying that it, being an author doesn't prove authority anymore. Writing a book is one aspect of showing authority. So if you're the kind of author who wants to make a living, you have to do more than just write. I mean, in, except in very small cases, of course, there's always outliers, but you have to do more than write. You have to show people that you are the person to be listened to when it, the topic of whatever it is you're writing about. I write what I call grotesque domestic fiction, which is you know, sort of academic uh, domestic fiction, but given a little bit of a creepy turn to it. And so I want to be the expert on that. If anyone says, I want to read something a little weird, but also, you know, not, uh, not necessarily sci-fi or anything like that, who's the guy? I want to be that guy, so I have to prove myself as an authority on YouTube, on Facebook, through a blog, whatever that might be. And my novels are just one way to kind of show that interest and that authority. So I just don't think it'll work for someone who wants to just sit down and write. Right. <laughs> I wish there's, a, there's that romance, there, there's that sort of false nostalgia, I call it, or I call it a Norman Rockwell nostalgia, which is like a past that never really existed, of the writer who kind of sits at a keyboard and types, sends something off to the editor, they get their check and they type and write some more. I don't know that that ever existed, to be honest with you, but we like to feel, I think, that it did as authors, um, but it didn't. So so just know that you're going to have to do more than just sit at a typewriter. Hey, that's it's work. Surprise. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right. So what is what's coming next? Right? What's the next um, untapped market or a place where authors can look to uh, make their mark or stand out like you're doing uh, on YouTube? You know, I think that, uh, well, I think so few authors utilize existing forms that to look into the next big thing is almost going too far because I think YouTube is still so underutilized by a lot of authors. Um, Google Plus, I know Evo, you're a fan. I, I'm a fan. Jeff, you're pro you're obviously a fan. And I, I wish that, that the communities thing that just came out, I think that's going to be a huge thing. I can definitely see authors building communities around what it is they write about. I could start a domestic grotesque community, right? And and build authority around that. And the communities are so seamless on Google Plus that, that, uh, that I think that could really work. But any author who is already averse to those sort of things would do well to probably start somewhere like a YouTube or even just a normal social profile. So I just think it's too underutilized to say what's what's next, at least from my limited perspective, I think. Funny you were going to say bookstagramming, in which case we were just going to cut you off right here. <laughs> is that a real thing? I probably now. So <laughs> it's, it's all now, on me. It's out there. <laughs> Well, listen, before this thing gets completely out of hand, I'm calling it. It seems like we've got a real good spot to stop that. Uh, so thanks very much, Caleb, for being on the program with us today. No problem. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. It was a lot of fun. Super lot of fun. Excellent. Gl glad that you enjoyed it. For those out there watching this, um, don't forget, we've got lots of stuff at ePublish Unum that can help you out. We've got a couple of uh, seminars that just went live and also two classes that kick up once again in January. So uh, please check us out at ePublishUnum.com. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of ePublish Unum. We help authors survive and thrive in a digital world. For a complete list of our educational offerings, including classes, workshops, and seminars, please visit us at ePublishUnum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I am Evo Terra. Thanks for being a part of the show.